Hey guys, it's Paul, and I'm at my friend's house, and as you can see, this is not my basement, this is his shop, and here is the FT5, we're making a bit of progress, and I thought it was time to maybe give an update as to where I'm at with it. Hey guys. Uh, well, I'm using the, uh, the the GoPro here this time around here, so uh, I hope I don't make you too seasick from uh, bouncing around. But I wanted to show off the uh, stunning lack of progress I've made on my uh, Focal Tech FT5. Uh, as you can see, uh, I think from the last time I did any kind of video entry, uh, I've got the uh, Titan Arrow installed. Uh, this is going into the 713 Maker Ultralight mount, which is this guy here. And it's got a pancake motor, so that's going to require a little bit of uh, um, tweaking as far as getting the right E-steps. Uh, as you can see, the wiring is going through the chain. I am using the silicone wire uh, that came with the kit. Initially, I heard some really good things about that silicone wire. I've heard from a few other builders that said, yeah, unfortunately, the silicone wire is also <laughs> can break as well, too. So... Um, I did have the Igus chain flex. I thought I was going to use that, but I really want to see how the silicone wire will do. And, uh, well, we'll have to see what happens. i um, hearing from some people that it works fine, and I've heard from a couple people that said, no, it, it caused me problems. So, I guess all I can do is try. Some uh, other additions down here. This is a 120 millimeter case fan. This is going to go on the back of the electronics case, and that's going to put a steady blast of cool air on the stepper drivers. Uh, someone had posted on the Fogotech forum that, uh, uh, or Facebook group rather, that uh, having that good airflow on those separate drivers makes a huge difference in the quality of the print. And this is a MOSFET. This is going to be uh, what takes the load off the MKS board as far as uh, what powers the heated bed. And uh, of course, it's got a little fan on there too. Whether I needed it or not, I, I don't know. And I had to wind up ordering some more uh, uh, silicone wire, 14 gauge. Uh, to complete the wiring in the uh, back of the unit, which I'll show you over here. And as you can see, <laughs> it's not the prettiest wiring job. Uh, I've seen a couple of Facebook videos of other people's builds, and I, I gotta tell you guys, I'm green with envy. Uh, some of these installs are very clean, but uh, mine, not so much. But uh, as you can see, we're at the point now where we're starting to wire up the power supply to the, to the board. And uh, I, I, I ran out of the silicone wire. This is regular stranded, and it, it, it's just too stiff. So I want to remove that. I was reading about the Duet Wi-Fi a few weeks back, and they had recommended the use of boot lace for while connectors, which are basically when you uh, strip the wire off the end, uh, what you would do is uh, you would uh, slide on the appropriate size connector and crimp it, and uh, then you would put it into these electronic you know, openings and, and uh, screw it down and from what I read about that it seems to make a better connection and it looks like a very good uh, idea as far as wiring management as well too so I have a crimper and a whole bunch of connectors on the way that should arrive in a few days so that will replace this and uh, uh, should help clean that up and as you can see I, I mean there's just a ton of stuff to be done here uh, the power supply is pretty much set to go uh, again the MOSFETs over here Here's my pancake motor, and uh, while we're doing all this wiring, uh, I added in an extra couple wires here for the part cooling fan for the for the power. And uh, I, I think we're at the point now where I'm kind of looking backwards and making sure I have everything done right. And so far, um, it looks all right. I don't want to go on and on about complaining about the instructions and how poor they are, but one of the big things that would help so much is that when you're going through the instructions, if it told you in each step what the finished step should look like, either in a photograph or any kind of review. Because, uh, you know, if if you're an advanced builder, this is a really easy kit for you. If you're, you're kind of a, you know, this is my second kit built printer, uh, I'm really struggling because I really like the details of making sure that every step I've done is correct. And uh, that's what's delayed me on this build. But anyway, without going on too much longer about that, the, uh, the, the printer is coming along fairly decently. I'm hoping uh, the last of the parts are going to arrive uh, by Wednesday and I can get back into wiring things up and then we can start doing the work with 
uh, the calibration, getting the steppers in there, and then working on the E steps. And then hopefully, maybe by the end of the week, uh, we'll start working on doing some uh, test prints. So, anyway, I wanted to give a little update video on how things are going with this. And uh, as you can see, it's progressing very slowly, uh, but we're definitely getting there. So, if you have any questions or comments, or, or like I said, suggestions especially, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, I, I look forward to your comments. And uh, I'm working on a couple other videos in the background here. I apologize again for the uh, uh, for the hero. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, GoPro video here, but uh, it was quick and easy, and it works very, very well. So thanks for watching, and just remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Catch you guys later.